In today's lesson we're going to be talking about morphings. Morphing is a transformation of an object into another one. You will constantly have a deal with these kind of tasks. There is always something to morph in the project. One icon to another or make a transition between scenes. To tell the truth, nicely done morphings are one of the most important attributes of high-quality motion design. And here are some good morphings examples. These are the simplest. Just simple lines with good easings. And these are more complicated, with 3D imitation and frame-by-frame -frame animation. Pay attention to how naturally the objects transform from one to another. The main problem of all beginners is that they create really slow and measured morphings. As a consequence, they get these kind of results. The long transformation is very noticeable and it distracts from the objects themselves. The main secret of good morphing lays in their speed, appropriate usage of bounces and other distracting elements. Using them, you will be able to make the transformation really invisible and natural. Now we will have a look at the basic tricks of creating really good morphings. The main thing is speed, so you have to understand that morphing must happen on the peak of speed, and no matter what property is changing – rotation, scale or position of object. The easiest way to morph one thing to another is one frame transformation. For example, we have our object moving from left to right, with easings of course, and in the moment of its higher speed we will replace the square with a circle in one frame. Super invisible transformation. And if you add animation to rotation property, it will make it even more invisible. The second trick is slightly more obvious. It is a change of object's shape. In our case, we will be animating object's path. Create animation and position property of our square. Draw a triangle and circle. Convert them to Bezier paths. Make a keyframe on triangle path, copy it and paste it in path of our square. Then, two frames further, paste the circle path. Now adjust easings and path property in the way transformations are hardly noticeable. So that, one more transformation is done. The next, less popular but very spectacular trick is splitting and assembling. It means that in the moment of morphing the object is splitting into pieces and then another object assembles from these pieces. They can already start morphing to another object during the splitting process or in the moment of assembling. It doesn't matter. Nicely adjusted speed graphs. That's what's really important. The next method calls overlapping, when the main object reveals another by going out from scene so that it was like the first one overlapped second. Overlapping can be very simple, like here, using masks, and also pretty complicated, like this one. There is nothing unusual in overlapping for viewer, he will understand what and how had happened, so it is not necessary to make it fast. Well, and distracting elements play a really important role in morphings. This can be motion lines, shadows, splashes and bounces. Bounces are generally a special case, as you can use them almost everywhere. But their main feature is that they attract attention on themselves, forcing the viewer to forget about the moment of transformation. Just to make sure, look at the wings of this beetle. You need to be very attentive or watch the animation several times to see the moment of transformation. At the same time, everything seems pretty natural in this animation. So, as any other animation techniques, morphing has combined method. This animation has more interesting look and it's harder to understand what tools were used by a motion designer. Before we get started with practice, let's have a look at two of 12 basic animation principles introduced by Disney animators. These are anticipation and squash and stretch. Anticipation is used to prepare the audience for an action and to make the action appear more realistic. Let's imagine we have to jump over a barrier, but it won't be possible to do that at once from the initial position, because we have not enough power and amplitude. We have to bend the knees first, make a swing, and then, after our powers are accumulated, make a jump. And that's what anticipation, a little action in opposite direction to one that will happen after. And the second principle is squash and stretch, the purpose of which is to give a sense of weight and flexibility to drawn objects. We have already used it in task with a jumping ball. We were stretching it in movement direction on the peak of its speed and squashed it in its hidden moments. This principle can be applied not only to simple objects, like a bouncing ball, but almost to everything that moves, to vehicles, characters and so on. That will add additional dynamics to the scene and give it more liveliness. Now let's find out how to use these tricks on practice. We will be training on these flat furniture illustrations. So we are going to transform table into cupboard and cupboard into lamp. 
Create a composition with size of 1000 by 1000, duration of 5 seconds. Draw a table on a single shape layer. The tabletop will be made with a 15 pixel stroke, drawers with rectangles, and the handle with ellipse. Now let's think about how the morphing from table to cupboard will happen. If you delete the tabletop, stretch the drawers, and squash the legs, you'll get a cupboard. Place the future cupboard below the table to make it easier to navigate and match the sizes. We will use Dream Path to make tabletop disappear. Add this modifier to shape with tabletop. Make a keyframe on start and end properties. Table legs will be transformed into cupboard legs by animating their path. Open them up and make a keyframes on path property. Drawers will become the cupboard doors. Let's make size animation of these rectangles. We also will correct the position of these rectangles, so make a keyframes on this property as well. The cupboard has two handles and here is only one. Make a keyframe on position property and duplicate this ellipse. Now, after we have prepared all the parameters, press U to see all animated properties. Move 4 frames further and by adjusting these parameters, create our Make easy ease for all keyframes. We have created a morphing of table into cupboard. Now let's think how to morph a cupboard into lamp. Unlike the cupboard and the table, these two things have quite different shapes. So the transformation moment will be hidden with the help of rotation property animation. So draw a lamp already rotated by 180 degrees. Later it will return to its final state. Cupboard legs will be transformed into lamp cable. And handles will become a bulb. We will have to redraw a lamp body as it has rounded angles. We will also animate these two shapes by scale around these points. So move the anchor points of two body parts here. Cupboard doors will disappear by scale as well. Just make them smaller. And the light will appear by opacity. Create a simple animation with toggle hold keyframes. Now, after all keyframes were prepared, make them easy ease. Let's adjust the parameters of shapes to make them form lamp. On that step, you must get this result. And now it's time to remember animation principles mentioned a couple minutes ago. Let's add more dynamics and liveliness to our morphing. Add anticipation before the transformation into cupboard. Select the scale property of layer, place anchor point to the bottom, and make a stretch along y-axis. After that, make a squash with acceleration and return to initial parameters. Speed graph must have a following look. Now apply bounce expression to end up the morphing with spectacular ray. Now we have to return the lamp to its final state. Create a null object and parent to it the layer with furniture. And make a rotation by 180 degrees while transformation is happening. Make an anticipation before rotation. For that, animate cupboard rotation around its left leg. Make sure that anchor point is placed in left bottom corner. Select rotation property and make animation of this property. It looks much better now, but lamp still seems to light, and it seems strange that after this powerful and fast rotation it stands still. Let's make a beautiful ending of this transformation as well. Create one more new object. Place it on the top of our lamp. That's going to be the center of rotation. Parent the first null object to this one. Create animation on rotation. 
and add bounce expression to it. To add more liveliness, let's bend cardboard and lamp a little. Select the layer with morphings and add a banded effect to it. Apply a ready known to comb value expression to start and end parameters. And here we will enhance the anticipation phase using band. So make everything in the following way. And make the speed wrap a following look. It has pretty nice look now. We could already stop on this stage, but we can make a movement more expressive. Let's add some motion lines. We will create them with stroke and trim paths. As you can see, there is nothing complicated and scary about morphing animation. The main thing is that you always have to make movements as expressive as possible. Don't make transformation too long, and of course, you can add distracting elements.